honeybees. There is a secret behind them. It's amazing, huh? Yeah. See how perfect they do the work without making any mistakes. When you see the bees doing all this work, they encourage you to work hard. See, I cannot be lazy. I have to be like them. <laughs> they don't have a day off, though. I feel sorry sometimes. Anyways. We could learn a lot from bees. You could learn how to be humble, how to be generous, how to deal with one another in the society and how to be a hardworking person. If we just learn a little bit from them, I think we'll behave much better than what we behave now. Don't you think? Yeah. I came to the U.S. when I was 19 years old because I used to hear from other people that California is a paradise for bees. And I want to come and see that paradise. My grandfather, my grandmother had bees in their farm in Yemen. And uh, my dad, he studied uh, agriculture and he got involved in beekeeping. He had a good position in the government, but in the end he gave up everything and he stayed with the bees and trees. As a kid, like five years old, I used to follow my dad and see what he's doing. Slowly, slowly, I got stung once, twice, three times, and become typical. It become in the blood, after all. You get stung, it hurts, but it become a good addiction. It's better to get stung with a bee than getting stung by another human being. You know what I mean. This bee here doesn't want to leave me alone. Mm. I want to say hello. Hmm. Salam alaikum. How are you doing, brother? How are you? We met each other in the community farm. I was given a bee class, and uh, Zubair signed up for the class. And we become friends since, and he bought his first hive from me. I, I did help you the first time, then the second time you called me, and the swarm in a tree, I told you, well, you can do it. He said, if you want to be a beekeeper, you have to be brave. <laughs> then from that day, he, he depends on himself. Yeah. He doesn't need me anymore. Mm. It's a river. Not bad, huh? <laughs> we need to wake up. See, the bees start to smell the honey. Mm -hmm. They're all coming in. Mm. Very good. There is a whole chapter about bees in the Holy Quran. They call it Surat Al Nahl. How God created that small insect to benefit human beings in all directions. In food we eat, in medicine we take. Honey, if it's pure, 
it kills a lot of germs. It cures you from a lot of illnesses. Sharab al mukhtalif in alwanu means it comes in different colors and it's all good for mankind. People are aware of the benefit of the honey, so it become tradition in Yemen. It's like here, you know, every corner has a liquor store. Over there, every corner has a honey shop. I own two businesses, and they both connected to one another. I have a live bee removal service, Khaled, a live bee removal service, and be healthy honey shop. Let's say somebody call me and I will go collect a swarm of bees with my vacuum or extract a hive out of a wall or attic, bring them to my boxes and let them produce honey for me locally. And uh, I have a shop in Oakland, be healthy honey shop, as you know. Uh, between the two, I'm making a living, support my family. With patience, you get to what you're looking for. You're not gonna get rich from what I'm doing, the way I'm doing it, but I do have happiness. That's what counts. Yemen now, it's in a bad shape comparing to what it used to be. My dad was one of the people who got affected with the corruption in the country for a long, long time. He had a conflict with one of those big sheiks head of the tribes. He uh, came and challenged uh, my dad. He shot my dad, took the land. Until today, there is no new no justice for everybody. After he got murdered, he got worse. No stability in a country, no peace. Some people are getting rich, a few people. The majority are starving. As a human being, whether you are a Muslim or non-Muslim, we have to look for one another. We say in Arabic, lakum dinakum waliya deen, meaning you have your own religion, I have my own. We have to respect each other. In reality, it doesn't matter what faith you believe in, you all come together in the end. Good morning, everyone. As you know, I'm Khalid, I'm a beekeeper here. Today we go through the hive and see if there is any honey we can take it out and we do the extraction. Feel free to ask me any question. I'm gonna put them here and then we'll replace later. I didn't touch the other frames. The reason why, because the queen is laying. I think we have enough. We just uh, take the honey out of it and we melt it and we take the wax out. Here, you, you, you do it barely just to scratch it. Yeah, yeah, don't go too deep, yeah. Yeah, you're doing okay, right? It's gonna go to the side and it's oh, coming down. Slowly, slowly, yeah. You see the honey is coming? I learned uh, how to be happiness from bees, most likely, and my dad. The way you get involved with other people and help others, it brings happiness. Just like the bees are helping us. 
probably you're not gonna get paid by helping others, but entirely inside, that's how you get paid. It's too heavy. You know, I had to go through hard times like everybody else, a new comer to this country. It was a challenge actually to find a job when I came, right? Because you are a foreigner and you are a student, you need to help yourself. I worked in a gas station and I worked in a bakery. One day I opened the yellow pages, you know, back in the days we used to have a yellow pages. People didn't use them anymore now, it used to be handy. And I've searched for beekeepers, I found Errol Funch. He was a very nice uh, American guy who taught me a lot of stuff about bee removal. In his 80s, he quit the work and he asked me if I want to take over. He gave me his phone number. He even gave me the vacuum before he gave up uh, the job. That helped me a lot to establish my bee removal business. Then the business started growing. People started to know more about me for removing bees. Actually, this location was given to me by him because he had it before me. I cannot find better than this one. Flowers the year round and nobody complains, except the cars goes by sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, there's a challenges in everything. Now it's a challenge to keep the bees alive and to keep the business alive. Back in the 80s when I came here, we used to have a lot of bees. The hive will soar more, 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 and you cannot control them. Now the bees are having a hard time staying alive. It could be mites, it could be climate change, it could be environment, chemical, or anything. You're lucky to have half of the bees alive by the end of the year. Imagine if the bees die, we all be in a bad spot, you know, bees disappear, mankind disappear. We should think about the next coming years. If we don't take care of the earth, it will be a challenge to, to save the earth. And it has to be saved for everybody. There is a secret behind honeybees. The God, when he made the bee, give him a message, like give the message to the prophets, but in a different way. I think if the bees will talk, they will tell us to stop going too fast. You destroying everything. Don't be greedy. You're not gonna take it with you when you die be more humble and uh, do your best because the bees are doing their best in life. I hear the bees buzzing, do you hear them? Yeah, in that hive over there. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Can, can I look at it quick? Sure. Yeah. I'm just thinking maybe a swarm coming. Yeah. 